Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today we're going to talk a little bit about the top view of Iowa class battleships. We got a question not that long ago uh, asking why Iowa class battleships in particular are designed so strangely in their hull form compared to other battleships. So that they're incredibly narrow up forward, then at turret one they get kind of wide, and they maintain that width very long down the length of the ship. Whereas uh, a traditional battleship, like uh, my model of Arizona here in the same scale, um, has more of uh, what's classically called the canoe shape, where it is narrow at both ends and gets wide towards the middle. Some ships, like Bismarck, uh, taper practically their entire length. Uh, so they've got like teardrop shapes going both directions. Whereas um, American battleships tend to be flat-sided for much of their length, although they will taper at the ends, that flat-sided nature allows them to better fit into facilities, dry docks, Panama Canal locks, things like that. But more importantly, it lets them do side-by-side -side underway replenishment. But the Iowa class throws that out in favor of uh, what has sometimes been referred to as the Coke bottle hull form. Really narrow neck, and then just full width the entire rest of the way. So first off, is that just the case with Iowa class battleships? No, it isn't. Uh, European battleships tend to have fairly standard uh, quote-unquote canoe-shaped hull forms, and pre-World War II era battleships almost exclusively have that hull form, even uh, American, Japanese ones that are designed to operate in the Pacific. However, by World War II, you have all three classes of American fast battleships having this Coke bottle shape, but also to a lesser extent, the Japanese Yamato class battleships have a fairly wide stern, um, although it does taper down to more of a canoe shape at the waterline. So I suspect that width is more just to have room for the hangars. They can't have their float planes on deck like American battleships do because the blast effect from the main battery guns is so much more severe. It would destroy things like the boats and the float planes. And so those are moved from the fantail where they are on the Iowa class into a hangar that kind of blows out there. But if you look at them at the waterline, you see that they still taper. So really, it's just American fast battleships North Carolina class, South Dakota class, Iowa class, uh, and then the subsequent Montana class also features this Coke bottle design uh, that, that have that as opposed to the more traditional canoe design. So there's a couple of things to keep in mind. Um, hull design is very much balancing. You want a high speed ship, so it has to be long and narrow. And uh, all of the treaty battleships that the U.S. makes are supposed to be fast battleships and therefore attain a much higher speed than, say, a short, stubby Pennsylvania-class battleship like my Arizona model here. Again, these are the same scale, so you can see that an Iowa class is one-third, again, larger than uh, a Pennsylvania. The main battery armament, 1214s versus 916s, is relatively similar firepower. Keep in mind, North Carolina was originally designed with 12 14-inch guns, and they get replaced with 960-inch guns. So firepower is the same. Protection against that firepower is relatively similar. What are we adding? It's the engineering spaces between the turret groups. And so you can see while your uh, Pennsylvania class has very little space there, the Iowa class has much longer to attain its higher speed. So you need a high length of beam ratio both to accommodate everything you're going to have on the ship for high speed and uh, to help with your hydrodynamic efficiency. One of the issues with American battleships, of course, is they have to fit through the Panama Canal. And so much of the other infrastructure is based around the Panama Canal as well. So things like the depth and width of the Panama Canal also get applied to many dry docks and other port facilities here in the country. So, that's largely why the ship retains this slab-slided length for most of it. They have to be able to fit everything on the inside, so having it start to taper away doesn't work. If they can't make this section wider as this section is getting narrower, 
They have to just keep that length for the widest possible duration. But obviously at the stern of the ship, it has to taper. So why is the Iowa class so wide at the stern? That actually has to do with the skegs on the underside or the twin docking keels here. The less haul you have back here, the more water you have running over your propellers and rudders, the more maneuverable you are, the more hydrodynamically efficient you are, but you still have to have a way to support this weight. So many older style battleships are very full hauled back aft and then they have this little notch right there. You see how close to the stern of the ship that is on a Pennsylvania class battleship. On the Iowa class, to get that higher speed, they wanted to make this curve happen much earlier, but that means that you're losing some of your interior volume, and you need that volume for things like the magazines for turret three, the armored box for the steering gear, that sort of stuff. So by widening that section out, you're creating that, that additional space inside. You've got more buoyancy now. It's giving you deeper torpedo protection. Now this is wider around turret three, so you've got better protection there. Uh, and you're keeping the same volume, even though you're reducing the depth uh, back aft. So the real reason why American fast battleships are so wide at the stern is because their stern curves up much earlier than older types of battleships. So what do you think? Was the US Navy onto something? Or the fact that everybody else is using a more traditional hull form uh, leads you to believe that these ships were just aberrations? Let us know in the comment section down below if there was a subsequent class of uh, battleships built, do you think they would have actually followed the Coke bottle hull form or gone back to the more traditional one? Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to donate to support the museum. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find about us and the channel. Thanks for watching.